Hollywood and the music industry are not what they seem to be. There are aspects of these industries that are so crazy that it's unbelievable to the majority of the population. No one is famous by accident and no one gets to higher levels of popularity unless they do certain things and in different levels you have to do different stuff. In this video we're going to go through a few clips that will give you an idea of what I'm trying to say. I told y'all in 2002, and y'all ain't believe me. I told y'all that nigga was a crap, and y'all ain't believe me. You know what I'm saying? How many accounts gotta come up? Dane, Biggs, R. Kelly, Kiss, Beans. I mean, the list go on. That nigga's a crap. It ain't no hate involved, but you know, you gonna see. He's still biting my staff. Jazz O's the best. Secret Society with Jay Z, man. He's involved. He's involved. But he's involved with, he's involved with this shit, man. He involved with that play shit. Like, see, people don't understand the science behind Satan, Lucifer, and God. And if you notice, he calls himself Jehovah. But I'm saying that simply to say that dude think he knows shit, but he still don't, he still don't know shit. He could get as many degrees as he want, but it's just like trying to get all the degrees you want, but you still got a ceiling. He can't go but so high because the people that he worshiping, that he kissing their ass and letting them fill them up and shit, they don't know shit. They trying to find out every day from us. That's why they follow hip hop. Let's be very, very clear. It is possible that there isn't anything funnier than a guy in a dress. And if that's the case, then it might also be said that there's nothing funnier than a black guy in a dress. Okay, well, I watched all of my friends throughout my entire life be able to dunk a basketball, but not me. So everybody can't do everything. So, you know, some of us make choices. I think it's not a biggest choice um, for others. I'm saying um, at the end of the day, Kevin doesn't have to worry about what people are going to say about him wearing a dress because of the long line of dress wearing people before him. So now we have Big Mama's house one, two, and three. Yeah. I've never seen Medea in a pantsuit. I think she wears dresses. So now I'm saying, why are we picking on poor little Kevin Hart? Because it was his turn next. The Hollywood call you yet? I mean, you know, yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm a part of that. At the Hollywood, you know what I'm saying? I, I got a Hollywood agency. You know what I'm saying? I'm, Let me I'm ask in that you a loop. question, right? I can't say too much, but I'm gonna say it. Has it ever been a time where it's though? Have you ever got a visitor? A visitor? Like somebody come to your house? <laughs> How can I explain this? Uh when you're getting to certain levels and you're glowing up, somebody come see you. And wanna come talk to you? Somebody come and see you and to help you go to the next, next, <laughs> next level. A lot of people, a lot of people, a lot of people, you know how you see, you might see somebody that's not that talented or not that funny or whatever, and all of a sudden they be all the way up here and you trying yeah. to figure out how that happened. It, now I'm going to rephrase this question. <laughs> Have anybody came to visit you? Uh, nah, <laughs> hell nah. Nah. I don't think they going to try to do that. How many times during your career, and this was for you too, Corey Mo, where you got to places that you were trying to get to and you realized that it wasn't shit. At some point, you're going to get invited into a, a house. Mm hmm and the house is gonna be broken down into certain rooms. Mm -hmm. And these rooms are designated by activities. Mm -hmm. So if you don't do the activities, you don't get in the room. <laughs> I'm with you. You know what I'm saying? So there's some of these houses and parties I've been invited to, and you get there and you realize, this ain't for me. Yeah. I wanted to see, could I get invited and get in that hole? <laughs> and then you get in that hole and realize, man, he's, I don't do this shit. Yeah. I don't fuck around like this. You over the wrong room, though. You be like, oh, damn, bro, that's how you move? My bad, you know? And so, you know, sometimes you, you, you think you want to be in these rooms with these people, and you get in the room, and you realize it's not where you want to be or where you need to be. At least if you're in the ATL and a nigga doing drugs in the ATL, the nigga at least excuse himself, go to the bathroom or some shit. Niggas in Hollywood just do the drugs right in front of you and act like ain't shit happened. You in the middle of a goddamn meeting. They, yeah, so what we're going to do is we're going to do the movie with you, and then we're going we're gonna to go back. <laughs> nigga, did you know that I can see you? Motherfuckers be gay in Hollywood, you never fucking expected. They be having these big ass mansion parties, and the mansion party, the whole mansion is a party, and then it's a separate party in the little rooms. I ain't been famous that goddamn long. I'm excited as a motherfucker to be at the mansion party. You be looking at all the goddamn rooms, and you fuck around and look in the wrong room and shit. <laughs> Nick, come here, come here. Is that two niggas kissing? Is one of them niggas Professor Obi? He came out the closet! He came out the closet! Oh my god, a rubber, rubber! You still do it. Why are you still out here? Well, it goes back to the destiny thing. I mean, I made a bargain with it, you know, a long time ago, and I'm holding up my hand. What was your bargain? To get where um, I am now. Sh should I ask who you made the bargain with? 
<laughs> with, 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 you know, with the chief, uh, chief commander. On this earth? <laughs> and on this earth and, in, uh, and then in the world we can't see. You ever look at music that you've written and look back at it and say, whoa, that mm -hmm. surprised me? I used to. Uh, I, I, I don't do that anymore. Uh, I don't know how I got to, to write those songs. What do you mean you don't know how? Well, those early songs were like almost magically written. Um, we want to thank you, come here, don't, don't sit on the bed at night, no homo, no, just, just don't get close to the bed, don't get close to the bed, but it's just like, yo, we want to thank you for hosting the thing, man, man, you, you, it's been a pleasure, you didn't have to do it, you did no, 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 I definitely didn't have to do it, I, I definitely didn't have to, uh, first and foremost, I'm not getting the bed, uh, you know, shout out to him and what he did, I'm just gonna, if we can, just, let's, let's just put the camera a little this way, just so we're not, I don't want my shot to even, like, I don't want it to come close to the bed, at all. I should sh look like he fresh off goddamn plane. Yeah, I just, I just, I just, I just, fresh off the guard stage. That's my brother right here from day one. We used to wake up and, I mean, damn, pause, but like, that's how, I mean, I mean, back in the days when he was like 10 and I was a little bit older, his older brother, we used to fight over the, over the Frosted Flakes, you know what I'm saying, before pause was invented, you know what I'm saying, but it's my brother for real. We used to actually wrestle off of the, off of the Frosted Flakes because he used to always get up early and now he's one of the richest stars <laughs> in the world. And yo, like, what, what the, the fuck, fuck did Puff just say? Good. Nobody's going to acknowledge this for me. Puff just said we used to wrestle over the Frosted Flakes and we're streaming live. That was stupid. Listen, that was fucking in the beginning, it's always been we. Ain't never been. And watch this, bun. I'm gonna say this too. These niggas out there think this shit is cool, but it ain't cool. Me and this man ain't never been butt naked in no room together with no hoes, pulling no orgy type shit or doing none of that whole ass shit you niggas out there be doing, thinking you doing some fly shit. Nigga, if you're in a room naked with some other niggas and some broad, them niggas looking at your ass. And if that shit is that shit is gay, and you need to get on some other shit. Me and this man got nothing but respect for each other. We ain't never pulling no train. We ain't no motherfucking freaks. We some family men, we getting this paper, you know what I'm talking about? And I had to put that out there, bun, because a lot of niggas doing a lot of fool gays and shit out here, man. You know what I'm saying? These niggas, they flip-flopping, they pitching and they catching with these boys, and they doing all this old. And if you gay, that's cool, but be gay and come on out and, and be that. Don't be in front of us and act like a straight-up G, and then you get over here and you let these boys bust up your back. Because, you know, it's going to come to the light. And, yeah, I want to put that out there, man. This man ain't never seen me naked. I ain't never seen him naked. We don't desire to do no shit like that. We ain't going out like that. And we, I mean, we were wild young teenagers. And we, we before hit, that ex, you know, that ex, yeah. I don't lie, that shit fucking with a lot of these boys' heads. I don't know. Man, Maybe they use an ex as an excuse to, mm -hmm. to open them doors that they really want to open. Like you know what I'm saying? Watching the game with my brother eating some chicken and waffles. This pretty black motherfucker right here. You know what I mean? Hey, yo, you did your thing this season. And this kid, my nigga, man, boy. <laughs> shit. I, I had to pat him down for you in my house. He was so believable. Yeah, he's got a little bit of man boy in him, though. I can tell. Yeah, we vibing. Nigga, how it feel? I was so mesmerized, I don't even know what you're talking about. <laughs> I was just so blown away by the stamina, the f***ing, the connection, being able to be connected that long with so much shit. You have I love you, man. Ugh! Nigga, you gay! It started, it started around when Ill, like around Ill Mind 5, when that came out. Because the song was so big and then they told me I had to like kind of sacrifice something. They said, you're going to have to pay it back because you just put this information out there. And this is going to this is going to put people in the wrong mindset of what we're trying to do in society. So they told me that if I don't. Um, if I don't do these list of things, then they are going to hurt my family or hurt, you know, people that I really care about. I want your man. Then this bitch won't spy the white -o. Now it's time for the so, so, uh, big flighter. It's time for the spider whiter. Now it's time for the spider whiter. I just had old CC right there next to the BP. I right, come you like this to a day party. Yeah. Ain't getting no fucking food. Ain't getting any food. Nigga, you gay. Snoop Dogg, Michael Jackson and Bill Cosby, what do these three have in common besides the fact that all three of these sold their souls? Well, let's have a look at this. So Snoop Dogg has been accused of S assault and funny enough, it happened right after he bought death row records before i continue i just want to say i'm not defending any of these three in fact i'm going to give arguments from the other side as well so in 1985 michael jackson bought the right to beatles he bought the beatles catalog people say he was trying to buy it no he actually bought it yeah and interestingly enough in the early 1990s he had all these accusations suddenly 
uh, spring up on him out of nowhere. And thirdly, Bill Cosby, he was trying to buy this network that starts with N and ends with C. I'm not going to say the name because these networks have a lot of power on YouTube. I've realized that recently, but you know what I'm talking about. And of course, about him, all these allegations started coming as well. Here's the thing. I don't believe that Bill Cosby or Michael Jackson were innocent. I don't believe that at all. What I'm saying is that they were being protected for all these years. However, as soon as they started to cross the line that their seniors or the people that are above them have put for them, all their debt started coming out in the public. It's the same with R. Kelly. The stuff about him was out for years and possibly even before that, the people around them knew. However, as soon as he was not useful to them anymore and he probably broke some kind of oath. So what did they do? Now they just hung him dry. It's the same thing happening over and over again because the status and the role that you're going to play in the industry is already set out for you and they're not going to let you progress further than a certain point unless you have been initiated properly and you've actually met your requirements which is a whole different topic yeah the things you have to do to keep going up to the next level like nori said there's a door it's just one way is this way the other way is another whole thing i believe there are doors within the doors and it just keeps getting worse the higher you go and if you haven't met your requirements they're not gonna just let you buy these networks and these big uh, music catalogs hell no they're not gonna do that and by the way contrary to popular belief people think that there is no friction within the elite themselves that's bullshit there are different factions between themselves as well one party might let you buy it the other might not like that so they have their own differences as well while one party is actually helping you the other one is trying to bring you down in fact in most cases i would say they're working together they let you buy it then they tarnish your image and they buy it back from you in a cheaper way what happened to the beatles catalog that michael jackson bought and who's getting money from it i don't know i haven't looked into it but it's definitely not going to be michael jackson well he's not here so yes by the way if you're still watching the video please hit the like button so yes, the devil comes to collect, especially if you haven't done enough. Let's watch this clip from one of my other videos on this channel of Yashkara speaking on this. What they didn't tell us or tell you is that in order to have any of those things, one has to sell their soul, sleep with sodomites, perform black magic, commit a blood sacrifice, etc. Now the chickens are coming home to roost. Here's the kicker. Watch the demonic fools ask for help in supporting their cause. Because now they see full circle that the elite has them marked for death. They will, they will scandal. When things are going good for these celebrities, they don't complain. But as soon as they realize that there's a time limit to what they can do on this earth and what has been given to them, they start complaining and going against the same people that they were doing everything for before they start realizing that they've become the target now. They knew this in a way. However, they never really expect that it's going to happen to them. That's their deal. You sold your soul, so you're going to have to pay in some way here and also in the hereafter. But they fail to realize that. That's why you see these things happening so much. Because you need to pay up. You can't just receive all these benefits without paying up. So you either have to conduct a B sacrifice or we're going to have to destroy your image and humiliate you and shame you forever. Or you're going to have to give up your money. Something has to be given up. Let's watch this clip of Hobson joking about this. But we know damn well that these people pass on truths as jokes to make fun of people that say shit like this. Because the song was so big and they told me I had to like kind of sacrifice something. They said you're going to have to pay it back because you just put this information out there. This is gonna this is gonna put people in the wrong mindset of what we're trying to do in society. So they told me that if I don't um if I don't do these list of things, then they're going to hurt my family or hurt, you know, people that I really care about. This is the truth in plain sight. It's the same thing that Jim Carrey did on the Jimmy Kimmel show. Yeah. He put out the truth as a joke and the audience was laughing. But you saw how nervous Jimmy Kimmel looked. 
He was like, what are you talking about? It's the same shit when Bill Baer went on to Conan's show and started talking about all oh, these people that go to these parties and wear a goat's hat and shit like that. And Conan was so uncomfortable. He was saying, oh, what are you talking about? He didn't play off as well as Jimmy Kimmel did. So yes, they put the truth out as a joke, as a mockery to make the people that talk about things like this as lunatics. But... We know it's true and they know it's true. So yes, you have to pay up in some way and that's why all of these things are happening because unless you've met your requirements, you're not going to be able to go above a certain level. All right? Six, six, six. Music is frequency program. Music is frequency. What frequency are you being fed? If I play with those frequencies, right, I can target certain parts of the mind, target the frequency to go to certain parts of the mind, and I can literally, if I want you to ask project, or if I want you to go to sleep, or if I want you to go into a meditative state, I can make my music do that. The brain processes information electrically. It communicates with the cellular structure electrically and it operates within a certain band of frequency. If you can broadcast frequencies carrying information, this, this technology has long been known, carrying information and perceptions within the frequency that, that the brain decodes information, the brain will decode those frequencies and will have those perceptions. You can externally influence people's perceptions externally by broadcasting these frequencies that, that we interact with because we are antenna. The sad reality is that where we now play our music is in A440. Where did that come from? It used to be 417. A440 came in with the Roman Catholic Church. They suppressed the frequencies. They lost somehow the 152 of the best Gregorian chants, including the hymn to St. John the Baptist, which we've now recovered. That that particular hymn was what triggered Dr. Paleo's investigation, looking for those frequencies of vibration by which the music was played. It was known as the most uplifting hymn of the, all the ages, the most spiritually uplifting hymn, hymn to St. John the Baptist. It was played to six tones. These are those six tones. These are those six frequencies. And so the a440 is what now is the standard tuning. If you go A439, you're closer to one of the creator's tones. If you go A441, you're closer to one of the creator's original tones. That's how precisely it has been manipulated. To do what? To shut down the 95% of your brain, particularly the right brain that operates the heart mind for the divine human community. Some decades ago, there was a guy who worked out the frequencies of different emotional states. This is long ago. I mean, it's very, very sophisticated now. So every thought, every emotional response is a frequency. It, it generates a frequency and it is of, of itself a frequency. Hate is a frequency and it's different to love. You know, when you are in a, in a room and there's lots of aggression and conflict and hatred, you feel it. What do people say? Oh God, you can cut the atmosphere with a knife in there. That is because the frequencies of hate and conflict have been so generated, they have changed the electromagnetic field of the room. When you go driving your car and your channel on the radio is tuned to a station and you're grooving to the music, you love that music. As you get farther and farther away from the broadcasting tower, that music gets static. You start to lose the signal from the clear channel, broadcast, and it gets staticky. When it gets staticky, you get a little annoyed. But you want to listen to it. You really have a heart for that music, so you continue to listen to it for another 10, 15 miles, and suddenly it becomes so annoying that you just get disgusted, you go, ah, and you shut it off. And if you continue to listen to it, you get sick. That's what we're talking about here. Except you don't even know that you've been listening to the static your whole life. You don't even know what the true resonant frequency is because it has been kept. Now, of course, to really be effective, we need to use the proper words and phrases, scientifically selected. But that gives you the basic idea. We embed messages just below the threshold of perception. 
so they can go directly into the subconscious. They can play across a community these frequencies without anyone knowing and it starts to have an effect and it starts to build. And we know exactly what works. We're professionals. Music is a language of emotions. It makes listeners feel a certain way. Our ears and minds connect sound to certain feelings, memories, subconscious thoughts. Believe it or not, music actually does this way more effectively than visuals do. There's some really great videos out there that illustrate this concept in film. Try watching a horror movie scene with the sound turned off. It's not scary at all. Or dubbing Benny Hill over something serious or even tragic will leave you with a video that you probably can't help but laugh at. Or play the right keyboard sound under a pastor's altar call and everything he says will sound a hundred times more profound. You see where I'm going with this. We know exactly how to use music to change people's emotions. It seems to me that music has slowly but surely gotten a little more demonic as time passes on. Um, I mean, some of the new music, I can't even listen to the radio anymore. It's either just it's not good music or it just it just is on a frequency that doesn't appeal to me. Have you noticed the same thing? Oh, a million percent. Absolutely. I mean, a lot of this stuff used to be done subliminally. They would either tune music to, to certain frequencies uh, that give it that dark feel, that dark vibe. And you might not notice it on a conscious level, but in the subconscious, the mind recognizes all of these things. And it's a lot of different factors that they used to play on. Now, there's no veil. The, the, the mask used to start to slip and they just put it right back up. Now they rip it off and they just show you what they are. Um, I think it's really the, the narcissism inside these people. Uh, that they feel that they are at a point where they can't be defeated. So why why hide the agenda? Why not just put it out there and say, this is what we're doing. This is, uh, you know, the ways we're trying to brainwash your children and indoctrinate them into a certain way of thinking. And, you know, unfortunately, the problem is that it's, it's very effective. Uh, these are very smart people that we're dealing with. They know the science of it. They understand the psychology. Uh, and they've got it perfected to a T. So it's really, really important, uh, you know, for artists to stay true to themselves, speak the message that they need to speak, speak the truth that they want to be put out there and actively fight back against this because uh, these people we're fighting against, too, they don't take a break. So we can't either, man.